So I'm going to go ahead and move on to examiner statistics. So the starting page for our patent examiner statistics, we have a, a search box and you can type in the name of any examiner and we do autocomplete to make it easy to find your examiner. So this is an examiner that uh, I've worked with and we have a page for each examiner and this is the page for examiner Akafawi. And in addition, we also have pages for the different uh, hierarchical units of the patent office. So we have a page for each art unit, the group, tech center, things like that. Um, we'll focus on the examiner page. So the top left here, we have employment information about the examiner, the name of their group, the different classes they work on, phone number, things like that. Uh, but for most people, the most important thing that they care about for an examiner is the examiner's grant rates. So we compute a grant rate for each examiner. And for this examiner, you can see that she has a grant rate of 41% uh, over 170 patents, patent applications in our data set. But to put that number in perspective, we also rank all of the patent examiners across the PTO, and we do a difficulty percentile. So this examiner is harder than 77% of examiners. And you can sort of see it visually in this thermometer diagram, the examiner is represented by this vertical bar. Um, so she's definitely a harder examiner at the patent office. Uh, in my practice, I fairly frequently get the business method art units. I'll sometimes get you know, examiners in the 99th percentile, which is sort of tough. But, uh, but this examiner is still, still pretty hard. All right, so for the examiner statistics, we also have several tabs like we did for the proofreading. And in this first tab, we have something that we call a grant rate timeline. And this is something that uh, no one else does as far as I know. This is something we came up with. But you can see the timeline here. And the starting point of the timeline is the date of the first office action. And what we did is for each month after the first office action, we computed the percentage of applications that uh, have been allowed, uh, abandoned, or are still pending. So as you can see over time, the percentage of cases that are allowed or abandoned increase and the, the percentage that are pending shrink. And I really like these timelines because it gives you uh, a lot of information about examiner behavior in a very concise way. Um, so examiners who are really hard, you know, you see this, this green uh, band just stays low the whole time. For examiners who are really easy, it shoots up to like 89% quickly. Um, but it also shows other behavior. Like for example, some examiners will go quickly up to say, you know, 20%, uh, but then afterwards it's flat. So these, these examiners seem to make up their mind early on. And no matter what you do, it's really hard to get the examiner to change their mind. And then you have other examiners whose grant rate is fairly consistently cre uh, increasing over time. So if you have an examiner like that, you're going to be more likely uh, to continue with an RCE because the more you press onward, you know, the more likely you are to, to have success. And if you hover over any time, you can see the, uh, you know, the details of, of each time instance. Uh, additionally, on this tab, we also compare the examiner to her art unit and also the patent office as a whole. So you can see this examiner is uh, a fair bit harder than her art unit and also quite a bit harder than the patent office average. Okay, so the next tab that we have relates to um, the benefit of doing an examiner interview. So in my practice, I almost always do interviews, but um, in some examiners, it's more valuable than others. So to gauge this, we compute the grant rate for the examiner where there were no interviews done at all. And then we compute a grant rate for cases that had at least one interview. And then we look at the change. And for most examiners, the number is going to increase. So for this examiner, uh, with no interviews, the grant rate's 30, 36%. And with at least one interview, the grant rate is 47%. And here you can see that's uh, a benefit of, of 31%, which is you know, a nice boost. And uh, we have the same numbers for the examiner's art unit and also for the patent office as a whole. 
So for almost all examiners, you see this number uh, increase, but occasionally you get an examiner where this number actually decreases. Uh, I guess there's some uh, examiners who really don't like doing interviews, so maybe it works against you. All right, so the next tab uh, is recent dispositions. And what we're doing here is now we're looking backwards in time instead of looking forwards in time. So the grant rate timeline timeline that we had is sort of predicting the future. Um, you know, it's going to predict what happens at three years after your first office action. But now we're just looking backwards in time and seeing what happened in recent years. Um, so for this examiner, you can see that in 2019, she's granted 18 cases and three abandoned. And you can see this going back for several years. And the reason I like this is that um, examiner behavior can change fairly drastically over time. Uh, it could be like a change in law, like with the recent changes with, uh, with 101, or it could be that the examiner uh, was granted signing authority and some examiners get easier when you know, there's not someone else looking over their shoulder. Uh, with this examiner, you, you do see a pretty significant change. Her, her ratio of granted to abandoned cases has increased quite a bit as compared to previous years. Uh, I'm not sure why that is. It could be 101. I suspect it probably is related to the, the change in the 101 law. Uh, and below we list uh, the 20 most recent cases for this examiner that have been patented or abandoned. And the reason I like this is that uh, if I'm having a tough time with an examiner and somebody else is able to get uh, a patent allowed with the examiner, I will sometimes look at the arguments that other attorney made to see if I might you know, use a similar strategy for getting my claims allowed. And to help you do things like that, uh, we have a button here that takes you to our patent plex, patent plex page for this patent. Uh, this is what I was showing you in the very beginning of the call. Um, but we have information on this patent, and then we have the, the tab to get the documents from PAIR. So you can go look and uh, quickly get an office action response that someone else used with this patent examiner. Okay, so the last two tabs uh, relate to appeals. And these are nice to have because appeals are expensive and, and take a long time. So it's good to, you know, to make good decisions for this. And the way that we approach our appeal statistics is that we try to help you answer the questions that you have in your practice. So the first question is, you have a final office action, and now you're asking yourself, okay, should I appeal this case, or should I instead continue and you know, do an RCE or something else? And the way we help you answer this question is we take all the appeals for this examiner, and we group them into good outcomes, which means you got claims allowed, uh, neutral outcomes, which means prosecution was reopened during the appeal, and bad outcomes, which means that the board affirmed the examiner so you didn't get any claims. So I like this at a high level because it gives you, uh, you know, a good indication of, of, of what's likely to happen on your appeal. Uh, with this examiner, uh, her percentage of good outcomes is, uh, you know, higher than the art unit and the, pat and the patent office average. That's a good sign. Uh, it's also a good sign that um, she doesn't get affirmed very often by the board. You know, the, the red band is quite small as compared to the, the other comparisons. And I should mention that, um, you know, the, like the green outcomes here include different things. So it could mean that the examiner just allowed your claims without letting the board decide it, or it could be that uh, the board reversed the examiner and allowed some claims. All right, so the next question we have is you have an appeal that's fully briefed and you're waiting for the board to decide. And here we help you predict what the board's gonna do. And again, we have uh, good, neutral, and bad outcomes. And a good outcome means that the examiner was reversed, so you got all your claims allowed. A bad outcome means the examiner's affirmed, so you didn't get any claims. And there's none here, but a neutral outcome means that the examiner was affirmed in part. So that usually means that you've got some claims allowed, but not all of them. And again, we can compare that with uh, the examiner's art unit in the patent office. 
And again, we see a much bigger band, green band, than we have for the other two. So this is a pretty, with this examiner, I think you'd be more inclined to uh, appeal, appeal earlier on than with some other examiners. So the last question we have relates to pre-appeal conferences. So this is a, you know, a low cost and pretty fast option you have when you file your notice of appeal. Um, more often than not, the, with these, you, you just go to appeal anyway. Um, but for some examiners, you have a better chance of getting a good outcome. So uh, again, we have good, neutral, and bad. Um, here, a good outcome means that claims were allowed as a result of the pre-appeal conference. This doesn't happen very often, but you know, occasionally. Uh, yellow means uh, prosecution is reopened, and red means that you just proceeded to appeal anyway, so you didn't get any benefit from the pre-appeal conference. And I would say with most examiners, it's a fairly typical pattern. I think this examiner is like that. Um, but for some examiners, you see a significant difference here. And for those, you, you, you definitely want to, um, you're definitely going to be more likely to, to do the pre-appeal conference route because you have a, a better chance of a, a good outcome from it. All right, so the last tab uh, we call appeal history. And here we actually list all of the appeals for the examiner that we have. And for each appeal, we give you an abbreviated docket of what happened on the appeal. And we have similar coloring as before, you know, good, neutral, and bad outcomes. And the reason I like this is that it gives you more insight into the behavior of the examiner. Um, so there's basically two ways to get claims allowed in appeal. Um, one is that the examiner just allowed claims during the appeal process without the board getting involved. And uh, the other one is that the examiner is reversed by the board. And I think it's good to see this breakdown because some examiners, it seems that they don't want to go to the board, so they will very frequently uh, allow your claims after you do your appeal brief, uh, but before it goes to the board. So I think that's a good thing to know. Um, or other examiners, you know, don't ever do that, and they always let it go to the board. Uh, similarly, for the yellow ones, uh, it's nice to see, you know, you know how prosecution is open. So, you know, sometimes you, you do your notice of appeal, you do an appeal brief, and after you spend all the time writing your appeal brief, the examiner just reopens prosecution with another office action. So that's pretty frustrating because you sort of feel like you you're going back to square one and you've wasted time and money doing the appeal brief. So if you have an examiner who does this a lot, and this examiner does it a fair bit actually, I think it's a good thing to know ahead of time to be prepared for. Uh, and that's uh, as compared with the pre-appeal conference where uh, prosecution gets reopened as a result of that, which I think is a more positive outcome because you've done a fairly inexpensive and fast process to, uh, to get back into prosecution. Uh, down here, the ones in gray are where the appeals were ended with an RCE or an abandonment. And we, we do those separate because we don't feel that those are very informative. Um, an appeal can end you know, via RCE or abandonment for a variety of reasons, and I don't think it real, it's really indicative of what your examiner is likely to do. And then lastly, the ones at the bottom that are in white are cases that are still pending. So, um, so we don't have a decision on those yet. Uh, and as before, for each of the appeals, we have um, a link to our Patent Plex page. You can go and get the, uh, the details of the appeal, and you can even get you know, the appeal documents um, from PAIR easily.